one of the things we were talking about was our, how we'd like to know more about how environmental issues uh, that we all face um, are being addressed um, outside of the U.S. And uh, one thing led to the other and we started talking about artists in Turkey and um, we decided, you know, wouldn't it be interesting to have a different point of view? My name is Nanette Yenutsi Macias, and um, I uh, teach at Oberlin College with uh, Arzu, um, who is a visiting professor of media studies. We're at the George Jones Memorial Farm in um, Oberlin, Ohio, which is in the uh, north, uh, northern part of the, of the state. piece was done, I believe, in 2007. It is um, a relief or a bas-relief mural that students in the art and environment class uh, at Oberlin College did in conjunction with Chris Fox, who's a green builder and who actually is the person who designed this uh, wonderful building. And they um, spent about six weeks out of the course learning about straw bale construction and then also learning how to repair it. It needs maintenance on the exterior pretty consistently so we helped with uh, repairing it and um, and then we were asked at a certain time if we'd like to create um, a mural. We sending each other emails about environmental issues in Turkey in here, so she was interested in, I was interested in, so that's, you know, when we said, oh, why don't we do something together if you're both interested in, and she was teaching a class called Art and Environment, and I think she was um, working with the farm, so she introduced me with, me with the idea of doing something involving the farm, and I loved it, you know, because it's a lot interesting for me to do something in an actual you know, farm space than in gallery space. So that initiated the idea of, oh, let's do an art exhibition at the farm. That would be brilliant. So yeah, it all started like this. Um, we tried not to create a very heavy-handed framework for, the, for what we thought was appropriate or not appropriate. But again, looking at the artist's work and asking them to respond to the idea of the relief valve, which is, again, like, how do you, ha what happens when pressure builds up, and how do you, how do you relieve that pressure, relieve that pressure, and for art, for many artists, it's by, in, you know, using the creative process to engage with these issues um, as, as creative problem solvers, as people who work with form and idea. The pressure comes from many different places. Part of it is that, you know, as as citizens, uh, we we find ourselves in situations where we are aware, increasingly aware, of what the issues are, and then yet there's a, a frustration and a pressure because we one doesn't know how to change that, or the change seems mon the, the change seems monumental, and and. I think sometimes that that can create a kind of apathy among many people. Whereas what we're trying to put forward is that engaging with the issue itself in whatever format, in whatever way you do as a citizen, as an artist, as a, as a student, is uh, taking that first step and that we all can take that first step. Yeah, there's one piece that I, you know, I'm really happy to have at the show. It's um, this artist, media artist called Genjo Gulan. Um, he he did this video piece. Um, he shot it underwater. So that this lady with high heels and you know mini skirt and really nice outfit, she goes under the water with a shopping cart, and the shopping cart is full of um, water bottles. So it's responding to basically 
the use of water in Turkey because what's happening right now, it has been happening for the past maybe five or six years, is that all the water, clean water resources are being sold to um, foreign companies. So it's Nestle and you know Coca-Cola purchasing all the water resources. So it's a reaction to that situation. Like we are purchasing our own water from a foreign company. So I find that video piece really, really interesting and important. So I'm really happy to have that. My name is Eden and Lotta. Um, I'm from Chicago. Uh, the project is called Shish Kebab um, and um, in response to um, Nanette and Arzu's call for artists to submit work about um, environment, the environmental issues, um, I'm responding with a piece that sort of talks about uh, or references um, culture and the importance of maintaining and um, sustaining nature for culture to be able to sustain itself um, and I'm sort of referencing that through food and um, sort of the culture of food in Turkish, in Turkish culture um, that's sort of the reference points I'm using so I'm going to be drawing a giant um, cloud uh, on a black sort of um, surface that looks like um, crude oil and I will be, um, the cloud will be formed with shish kebabs, um, cotton shish kebabs. Well, you see, the, the, I mean the food comes from the environment if you would, uh, uh, even though farming is a cultural behavior. Um, it still uses, it's still very reliant on nature to be able to deliver the goods. Um, and Turkish culture is one of those cultures where eating and food um, is something that uh, is very central to day to day, uh, for daily life. Um, that's how where they socialize. So sort of when you think about like Thanksgiving dinner in the US or uh, Christmas, that's sort of throughout the year for Turks. I mean, they. So the quality of the food that they eat and uh, the, the quality of the supply is really, really important because that is very much a part of the conversation. You know, people talk about how delicious the food is and how it was made and you know, sort of always reference how sitting around this table and enjoying the company of people with the food, with the good quality food, is very much a part of Turkish um, culture and its expression. I mean, there's so much that comes out of it, whether it's slang, whether it's sort of how people express their love for each other. Um, but that, that source is getting more and more contaminated. Um, I mean, it's getting contaminated at, from the farm to sort of goes into industrial production, and then when it ends up on the table. Um, and that quality disappearing is a very serious threat. And a lot of times Turks would say, or not everyone, but you know, people would say, oh, for progress we need to industrialize, you know, for progress we need to become modern. And so therefore they don't object to um, environmentally hazardous behavior with the food production. But what they're not noticing is that that production actually does hurt their very fundamental cultural essence. And that's the whole part of the piece. Um, and once you know you sort of pollute the, the the food chain, it's very hard to go back and clear that and clean it up again.